much. You liked it? Right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's the Wallace Reboot. Hello. Hey. Welcome to the Wallace Reboot. Okay. Much anticipated. You want it. <laughs> You're going to get it. This is the question everyone asks. So we're starting out our new one informational video a month with the number one question. And that is how? How do we afford it? How do we afford it? Did we win the lottery? Heck no. <laughs> we don't play the lottery. Uh, did, we, did we get a huge inheritance? Uh, nah, no, it wasn't like that. That would have been nice. It would have been nice. Did we sell our house and our cars and all, most we of our stuff? We did. Exactly. Okay. Um, so, how we started was we sold our house and we made about 30, I think 35000 Revenue. We didn't go back and look it up. I'm sorry, but it was in like low 30s. Give or take. 35 yeah. max. Yeah. Um, and then we sold our cars, but we didn't actually sell those till like a year in. Yeah, it took us a while to get there. And then oh, yeah. we did sell a good amount of things, but Clothes, furniture. We donated <laughs> a huge amount. So, anyways, yeah. our initial money was. We had no nice. savings. We were living paycheck to paycheck in the states. We could not afford to go on big vacations. We didn't travel internationally with the kids. Mm -hmm. We didn't go on planes with the kids. Mm -hmm. um, we went like on staycations where we could drive to. Yeah. And it wasn't very often. Um, it was fun though. It was fun. <laughs> we like road trips. So. Yeah, we're a big road trip. We told everyone we were leaving for a year, but we knew that it would be longer. Um, we just wanted to make sure that we made that initial money last a year mm -hmm. and it lasted longer that longer than that because we also have some other income. So we'll yes. tell you about that next. Cause that was the next question is, Oh, how do we keep going financially? Where did Cheddar come from? Okay. That's the question. So <clears throat> we had that, we had that savings from selling everything and then Later on, no, well, monthly, we also have a military retirement check that I get every first of the month. So he's a retired <clears> Marine <throat> and we get military retirement and it's a total of 1500 mm -hmm. yeah. So it's weird though. I don't know when it went up because it used to be 1100 mm -hmm. but that's awesome. <laughs> so we need it. Okay. So a total of 1500 be 1500 between disability and retirement. Right. I would say... Hmm. What would you say? I'm just trying to think about. Okay, we're just gonna. Be, we'll always be transparent <clears throat> with you. <laughs> mm -hmm. We we don't write down and keep good track of a budget, even though he keeps pressing and asking me to, and I'll start and then I, I do. lose I track do. and don't finish, and then I give up for months and months and months and months and months, and then he brings it back up, and you think he would just do it, but he doesn't do it either. So. Anyways, um, but the very beginning of the travels, when we were spending more, so it would be a budget for people that have a little more cushion and that want to live very similarly to, uh, similarly to what they do at home in a Western country. Um, I can tell you we were spending between three to 4,000 a month. That was when we had the savings and we yeah, had his, his military and <clears throat> we we're in Western Europe, so it was more expensive. Right. Okay, so total transparency. <laughs> um, we did have one month in the beginning. <laughs> we actually spent like six thousand and three hundred and thirty-five. Birthdays, all them birthdays. Uh, it was October and November. It was right in. Brighton, England. Yeah. It was England. It was birthdays. It was England. It was birthdays. Um, we totally took yeah. Av to a Broadway show in London, mm -hmm. and we were living large that month. And part Yolo. of it, yeah, we also did like some bigger tours. We mm -hmm. did. We just did more that month because we felt like we had some money, so we were spending it because we were only like a couple months in. Okay, so that was a crazy month. Um, but then I do have there, I had checked like three other months around there and it was an average of 3,000. So I did write down 
um, some of the prices for the housing. And so we can talk about that a little bit because that is a huge way that we do save and that we're able to keep going is by really trying hard to find good prices on housing. So our initial first stop and one of the most expensive was in Spain and we got a place with a small pool and it was mm -hmm. kind of walking distance to the beach. I mean, it was like a 40 minute walk really, it wasn't but bad. it was, no, it was, it was nice. fine. Yeah. It was good. But, yeah. um, we were viewing that kind of as a vacation because of everything we had gone through to get prepared and to get out of the house. It was a lot of work. Yeah, it was a lot. So it was a reward. Yeah. So that was 1550 us 1558 actually. Mm -hmm. Um, that was with Airbnb, so that includes everything. That's Wi-Fi, utilities, whatever. Um, we were there for a full month. So fifteen fifty eight for a full month. Then we stayed in a yurt in Wales, and that was like 850-something, I think. Yeah. And that wasn't a tent, but it was in UK, in Wales. So like yeah. everything in UK is really expensive. We've balanced things out by finding deals like the following one. The third month we stayed in Ireland. Yes. We happened to find an amazing family. And we love you. <laughs> and um, they lived south of Dublin, which is pretty expensive. We mm -hmm. were really wanting to go there, but we couldn't find afford, anything yeah. on Airbnb or anything that we could afford. I posted on a page, the World Schoolers page on Facebook, and she contacted me and said, we happen to be leaving like the day after you guys are trying to come to Ireland. Um, and we'll rent you our house for 500 euros. So you can do that conversion. Sweet. But like, seriously, a third, I mean, fourth maybe of what we could have found. And that was truly a blessing. That was a huge blessing and that afforded us to be able to actually go to Ireland and be able to do some of the amazing things there and the gas to drive all over the island. And, and it made it possible. Mm -hmm. um, so it's things like that that we've found along the way that have really helped. Now, another thing that we haven't, we actually finally signed up, but we haven't used yet, but we know families that has really helped them is house sitters, yes. house sitting, pet sitting, house sitters.com being the main one, the one we chose to join. Um, we just haven't found anything with the date signing up here in Asia so far. And so for those that know, we are, in, we're in Chiang Mai, Thailand right now. But we would love to house sit for you if the date's lined up. I know, seriously. <laughs> But that saves families a ton. Yes, so they does. stay places for free in exchange for watching over the house, watering plants, taking the mail, Think watching pets. the pets, yes. um, things like that. So there's a ton of info out there for couples and solo backpackers and travelers. And so we're hoping we can get a little more helpful info out there for those wanting to travel with kids so they, mm -hmm. they can see that it is possible. Because yes. a lot of people think you, like, you have to stop traveling no. when you have kids. No, we didn't you start. do it. We didn't start till we left with four. Yep. So... Um, a little bit more on the housing. I could go, I'm not going to go through every single one, but we try to stay a month. And with uh, most places, and especially with Airbnb, if you're staying 28 days or more, um, you typically are automatically going to get, like most a people offer price. a great discount, like 40 to 60% off for the mm -hmm. month. I mean, it makes an amazing difference. So we stayed a month in Prague. They knocked off like 60%. It was winter time. And we paid 614 US dollars for an entire month. Mm -hmm. So we're not staying in the most like huge, yeah. amazing places where everyone has their own room. No, the girls oh share a bed. We try to get Micaiah's own bed. Um, if it's a month long, we really try to get him like a bed bed. Yeah, but yeah. sometimes it's a week and it's like you're on a couch or a futon, but mm. sorry. Um, you gotta make it work. So a bed for us, a bed for the girls. Kingston sleeps with us usually. And then... We'll try to sleep with the girls. We'll see how that Yeah. Is. And so we've stayed in smaller places. The place in Prague was we had a bedroom. There was a tiny kitchen and bathroom. And the kids' room was literally... The dining room. The dining room, family room. Living room. All of their bedrooms. So, like, <laughs> some of us sat on the end of the girls' bed to eat dinner at the dining room table. So, like, we're not living, like... I mean, you make sacrifices to get these prices. Mm -hmm. But as a family of six to get... 20 21 22 dollars a night is pretty amazing yeah. so we are we think it's worth those sacrifices to get to see amazing places like Prague, fairy tale mm -hmm. city oh yeah Very um beautiful buildings. germany one month we paid 890 that was dead winter up in a ski resort town a little lodge england super super expensive we paid 1500 and that was through a friend that we met while traveling that were going to spain and they rented us their house um, at cost while they were gone. Mm -hmm. Croatia, we found through a friend that we met at church in Prague, and she hooked us up on Facebook with her friend. 
We were oh, able to yeah, stay yeah, there yeah, yeah. six weeks for 850 US, mm -hmm. which is awesome. Yeah, that. it's amazing. <laughs> um, some of the week long stays, though, just to give you an idea. So when it's a more expensive place, and we are we were driving at the time, so we were going through, and we wanted to stop, and we're like, well, we're not going to just blaze through Paris and not see it because we're right. here. Sometimes we stay a few days. Sometimes we stay one week. You can also get some discounts if you stay a full week um, just by asking. And we recommend on any any site that you're directly contacting the owner, like Airbnb, or even sometimes on booking, booking you're able mm -hmm. to send an email um, or call the place, call the place directly and ask them for a discount. And a lot of places will give you one as you just right. have to ask. Um, so it is about asking. Yeah, I mean, give them a little, like, say hello. Give them a little personal info on who you are and what you're doing and when you would like to come and see what they can do. Just say you would be really grateful for the best offer. And it's worked great for us. Some week-long stays, to give you examples, high season on Creta, Crete, um, in Greece, tomorrow. was 500 so that would have been a 2000 month. Maybe not, though. We might have got a discount for staying a full month. We weren't staying true. a month. That's true. But in high season, like people were freaking out on this grease page I'm on because 500 a week is insane for us. We don't do mm -hmm. that. Yeah. But the, the, the page, location. I went and asked the location and high season, like they were like, how in the world did you find that? Yeah. That's unheard of. Mm -hmm. And so, and it was actually a nice house. We all did have our, like, Makai yeah. had his own room, the girls had a room and their own beds. Like everybody was super happy. Yeah, there. it was nice. Yeah. Um, a week in Macedonia was 306. Dubrovnik was actually the same. One week was 306. Mm -hmm. Albania was actually only like, I think 160 or something. It was insane. Like dirt, dirt cheap for a week. Okay. So that's a little bit of our, how we do housing and the tips on housing for a year now. So you started nine, 10 months in working for the Yeah. He, yeah. Yeah. yeah we so yes. now that, um, Probably all, yeah. Now that all of the savings is gone, um, we are down to living just on what our we have coming in monthly. The, so the for us, that's the military. That's fifteen hundred, and then what he can make teaching yeah, he online. Yeah. He has started teaching um, with a second company, but it's only been a month, a month. and so it. we didn't yeah. include that yet. So hope, yeah. we're hoping that we'll raise up our yeah. our amount, income. our income yeah, a little definitely. bit. Um, but just so to give you an idea with VIB kid, the lowest month when he first started was $46. Woo watch out now. His highest was 967 and the average so far has been 650. Yeah. Yeah. So not too bad. Close to a thousand, not really a thousand, you know, trying yeah. to get it there. We're trying to get it a more consistent schedule. It's just been, it hasn't been hard, but it's been, it takes a little bit of time or has mm -hmm. for us. With the full-time traveling and not knowing always where we're going to be or what our travel right. days are going to be. Right. Um, like right now, he doesn't have things open for the next three weeks, which might slow us down a little bit. Yeah. Because we don't know what day we're going to be traveling. So as exactly. soon as we get that nailed down, then um, he can open up his bookings and get mm -hmm. some income coming in. We definitely have to make sure we have Wi-Fi. So. Yeah. Okay. So that's how we personally keep going. I would like to touch on... I'm going to say a little story if you haven't heard it really quickly. I saw a family traveling with two small children on Instagram probably a good year, maybe two years before this came up for us. I sent her a message because I was just like, what? How? You know, I was like intrigued. So I sent her a message and was like, how do you do it? And she was very kind and she responded and she told me like her husband was some kind of computer you know, guru, geek, awesome. Yes, yeah. And he could <laughs> no work offense. it from anywhere. And she was a professional photographer. And I walked away from that just like, mm, all right. <laughs> and I just put the idea like in the back shelf. I was like, we could never do that. Yeah, that's not me. So I walked away from that though, just totally like a little defeated and like, there's no way we can do that because we're not either of those things. And I could not think outside of the box. Like I couldn't see how it could work. Um, without their specific answer. So if you're sitting there saying, well, we don't have a military retirement coming in, mm -hmm. we don't have any retirement coming in, um, so we can't do that. Okay, well, you can't do it using a military retirement, No. but you can do it. So you can search online, you'll find a million ideas. I'm not even kidding you guys. But things that I've seen people doing successfully 
is being a virtual assistant. Mm. Um, yes. You can go online and there's different sites. You can look it up and read all about it. But essentially, you can manage someone's social media for them. You can manage their emails. They might have a, um, a business. Like I know someone, their business is back in the U.S. and they're traveling around and they're managing their um, bookings for their dance school mm-hmm. or they're doing their finances for them or there's there's all kinds of things you can do. So you got to think about what you know how to do. And then there is someone out there that doesn't want to spend their time doing that because they're trying to do something else seriously though, but they yeah, need it done. That's true. So it's a viable option. You can make a full-time living doing that. And you're then all of a sudden you're not tethered to one place, mm-hmm. you know, just to your computer. And so, um, that's an option. People do work away. So mm-hmm. they find places they can go and work or volunteer in exchange for accommodations and food. Yeah. So you can look into that. There's various sites that um, accommodate that, and I know that there are some families that are doing it. So it is a possibility. It might be a little bit harder, take you a little bit more research or a little bit more communication to assure the people that your kids won't you know, be a hindrance, they'll be a help, and that you can do it. Um, Workaway itself has like limitations. Like You can only work. like It's no more, I think, than five hours a day or something mm-hmm. like that. And so it is viable to do with kids and you, if you're a partnership, then you guys can take turns sometimes. You can find ways to figure it out. So one's with the kids and one's working. Mm -hmm. Um, There's a will, there's a way. There's people that would love you to go into their home and help them set up all their social media because they're not tech savvy and they know that that's, you know, what you need to be doing these days with your business. Mm -hmm. Um, There's people that will have you come in their home and create content for them. They want their they want to put their place on Airbnb and they want better photos. There's yeah, people that want videos and photos for their business. That's a huge thing. That's content creation. That's what all these people are doing on Instagram. Mm-hmm. Um, they'll exchange a like a tour or an activity or products or a hotel stay for their original, you know, photography and take on it or Sometimes they do. They don't want super professional. They want to see an actual family in there enjoying it. And they want you to share that with your audience who you have a personal relationship with and a connection with. And so that's also an option. A few other things that people do off the top of my head are um, a really big thing right now is selling courses. So there's there's sites like Udemy. It's U-D-M-I-E, I think. Skillshare. Um, You can create a course and so either like a series of videos showing or explaining how to do something and I'm talking about anything. So like if you're an amazing crafter, you know how to do something. There's something people ask you, how do you do that? Or like how to bake a certain thing or like I'm I'm not kidding or how to play guitar, how to program, how Mm -hmm. to anything, how to speak Spanish. Mm -hmm. Like they have lessons for everything. And same, there's a homeschooling site too. There's a few, like just research, like there's a billion places you can sell your skills. And you might not think you have skills, but trust me, there's things you do that like you've had someone ask you like, oh, how'd you do that? Mm -hmm. Because everyone doesn't know everything and there's someone that wants to learn and is willing to pay. And especially if they can pay less, you Mm -hmm. know, because when you're just getting started, you're going to charge less. And so you're getting a little something, they're getting a discount and it works out great. That's a really big thing right now I've noticed is people selling courses, a lot of the travelers. Um, and some are, you know, on things like those and some are on how to travel, how to meditation. There's all different kinds of things. Um, there was one other one. So selling courses. Oh, there's a site called Fiverr and you can go there and you can hire someone or sell. You can work for them. Um, like, gosh, like literally anything. You can hire someone to create. I, my friend was telling me that there's people You can hire these two guys. They go out in the forest in their, they go out in the jungle in their Speedos and they do a personalized happy birthday song to the person you give them the name for. And it's like 20 bucks or five. Seriously. Like some are like five bucks a song. And then there's a guy that's like in the shower scrubbing his hair and he sings happy birthday, personalized happy birthday. He gets 20 bucks a song. Uh, I'm dead uh, serious. uh, Like you think, like just go scroll through Fiverr, Fiverr and see all the different ideas. You can hire someone to edit your videos. You can hire someone to make you... Um, your profile picture you can hire like anything so yeah (laughs) seriously no seriously where there's a will there's a way you guys if you want to do something big you want to travel full-time or it has nothing to do with travel but you have a dream and it's going to cost some money it's like you know all the old adages are true it Mm -hmm. it, it, it just takes some time or money it's going to take time or money and you figure out something of value and you can sell it someone's going to buy it we have a few things we're hoping to start working on and 
we'll, you know, see how it goes, but there are options. So, so someone asked, how much do you work and is it better than a real job? <laughs> are you happier? I am happier because I work when I want to work. You know what I mean? Um, I get to spend time with the kids, you know what I mean? And then when I need to work, I'll go ahead and work. I did a hundred and uh, two classes or something like that. And it's like maybe... They're 25 minute classes. Yeah, 25 minutes classes. So yeah, 50 hours a month. You know what I mean? You've worked more. Than, well, I guess you don't work every day though. Mm -mm, not every day. So like I said, it was like a hundred and... Too. I feel like there's got to... That was the most oh, that okay. I did. So, yeah, there 50 hours a month. Make about close to a 1,000. So, I mean, hey, it's all up to you if you want to work more. If you don't want to work more, you can do that. So, I mean, I'm happy with it, you know. And yeah. with me doing this other uh, second uh, English uh, online uh, class, it's a little bit more but like I said we just started so I kind of have to calculate it and see and it's not difficult juggling both oh sorry to cut you off but VIP kid we didn't say like what do you make per hour oh so it's um 20 you can make up to 20 bucks an hour that's the most okay. you can make 20 an hour um how do you we balance work and travel what I do is I look at the calendar and if I see there's dates that she already has planned out, so I make sure that I don't open up that same time frame so it will conflict. So basically, we just have to make sure we get in the calendar actual traveling days, days that we are physically moving mm -hmm. our things. And then also we'll do a few days. We were actually, Thailand's been a lot different for us than our traveling was in Europe. And so... In Europe, though, we were really good. I think we had picked two days. You took mm -hmm. Sunday off, mm -hmm. and we had two days open that I could schedule yes. something to go out and do some world schooling. Yes. So go to a big site, do mm -hmm. a day trip, things like that where we're going to yeah. take the kids to learn. That worked out pretty good. It worked out really good. Mm -hmm. And then in Chiang Mai, in Chiang Mai, we've been about, you've mostly just been working. Yeah. If something comes up, like we meet another family, and we're going to go do something. Or when my parents were here, he didn't work yeah. much. Yeah. Um, so that he was open to just so we could do family things mm -hmm. and then like Christmas Day and things like that. But yeah. otherwise, that's all. And we I really definitely do. don't work on Sundays. You know yeah, what I mean? no we Sundays. don't work on Sundays. Um, I don't get paid, but I work. Yes, she does. I edit filming and editing the videos and things like that, and I haven't figured out how to balance that yet. I'm gonna be honest with you. Um, because we're on a tight budget, we have the free editing software, a really old laptop. And old heavy laptop. An old phone that I'm praying this audio works because most of the time when we're out now the audio doesn't work. So I'm starting to do voiceovers. So um I spend a lot of extra time editing than I actually need to. Yes. Okay. This was the next question somebody asked. All right, do you save money? I'm sorry, do you save more by planning ahead or last second? Doing things last second. So mm -hmm. that's <sighs> it's kind of hit or miss. That, I mean, seriously, I can't give you like a hardcore, like I can't give you a solid, strong answer one way or the other because it depends on the place. It depends mm, on the exactly, season. Exactly, exactly. If it's That's high it is, season, yes. then you want to book ahead. If it's Christmas time anywhere in the world, even mm -hmm. if it's a Buddhist country, yes, you want to book ahead. Um, <sighs> we did try the whole show up thing, but it mm -hmm. was low season and it worked great for us. We got, I think we ended up paying $11 a night. Yeah. That was good though. We got two rooms. And each was 11, so it was 22, but it was awesome. And that was on, on an island down in Rayleigh. southern Thailand in Rayleigh. Mm -hmm. um, so that paid off. But I will say, everybody said, just go to the airport and you'll get the cheapest flights. And then we looked before we left because we left some stuff at a friend's house in Bangkok so we could go lighter and, like, you know, more backpack style right, down right. south. And we looked, and there was flights like $15, $17, and we're like, sweet, okay, let's go to the mm -hmm, airport. Mm -hmm. Amazing race, right? And so we went to the airport, we got there, and those prices were nowhere to be nope. seen. And we were like, oh, what nope. happened? And so, and yeah. so we went to a few um, different airlines. Airline counters and I was like what happened we were just like half an hour ago mm -hmm. we looked and they're like oh no they're still out online go book online 
So it's cheaper to book online than to go to the airport and book. Yeah, so don't run up in there thinking you'll get some good prices. Yeah, even in Asia, no matter what you hear, people say. Um, so that didn't work out. Not for us, anyways. Um, yeah, things that are going to sell out, things that are super popular, you want to do. I kept trying to get the Eiffel Tower, though. Like, that was actually a lot of questions coming up was excursions. Um, I kept trying to book the Eiffel Tower because I heard that it sold out. And it said it was sold out. And I was like, oh, my gosh, I'm going to ruin Taven's life because that was her dream since she was three. Yeah. And we were only there for a week. And I was like, oh, my goodness. And so I just said a prayer. And I was like, this is the only day we can do it. So we're doing it. Yeah. And we rolled up at like 2.30 in the afternoon and we like walked up to the ticket counter mm -hmm. and walked onto the elevator. No it was insane. Yeah. <laughs> like a Friday afternoon, the week of Christmas. Like it was, that was true. three, three days before Christmas or something. It was yeah. crazy. So yeah, sometimes waiting to the last minute has worked for us. <laughs> like you really just got to go with your gut. I don't have a solid answer on that. Like, buses here can sell out, and they don't get cheaper. The prices don't change. So if you know you want to go, then you might as well book it. Mm -hmm. um, trying to think what else, planning ahead. Sometimes Airbnbs will take, will give you a better last-minute deal. Like, That's true. Yeah. Hey, you know, we weren't quite sure if we were going to be able to make it or not, but we've been watching your place. It looks amazing. We'd mm -hmm. love to stay there. Yeah. Um, we could come, you know, this week, starting this day, and stay this long. Is there any way you could give us a discount? So sometimes that works. Sometimes. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, it, it can't hurt to try. No. Nope. We do travel very last minute, though. So I don't think it's a huge detriment to do it that way versus booking way ahead. Because mm -hmm. we do it and we work it on yeah. a small budget. That's true. So um, we did just book tickets. We're not going to tell you where. Um, that we'll be going to in two months. And then we booked our bus tickets. By tickets, I meant flights. Mm -hmm. And we did book our bus tickets. Um, yeah. Or I haven't. We will be booking those mm -hmm. to leave next weekend. So, yeah, one more week. So things, yeah, I don't know. I'm uh, sorry, I don't have a super <laughs> awesome answer for that for you. Because it does, it just kind of, anyways. Um, someone asked... How do you find excursions without speaking the language? Ooh, good question. How do we do anything without mm. speaking the language? Um, which doesn't totally go into budget, but we had a few other excursion questions. So we'll just talk about excursions and going mm. to do things and see things where we are. Uh, why, why we have that. That was part of it. Mm. So speaking the language, Kapunka. if you're if you're <laughs> going to do an excursion somewhere, I guarantee you... They know about tourists. Yes. They have hired someone who speaks some English or can yes. point at the sign that's in English. Mm -hmm. And if all else fails, you Google Translate and you use a lot of body signals. How do we afford excursions in general? So this is a thing that comes down to... Time. <laughs> what do you mean? Because you have to look for the deals and stuff like oh, that. Oh, I do yeah. a lot of research, yeah. yeah. So you can look for local sites. Mm -hmm. Like here they have an actual local site that's really similar to the ones in the States. Like... I haven't gone so long, I can't remember. <laughs> what is it called? It starts with a G. Uh, oh, wow, you guys. Groupon. <laughs> Groupon. That's yeah, what it is. Good job. Groupon. Good job. Good job. Okay. <laughs> That's crazy. Okay. So they have sites like that in different countries. So you can Google that and look or find a local Facebook page and ask. Um, so you can still find deals like in, in normal ways. A lot of places you can bargain, but in other places you totally can't. You can't roll up to the Eiffel Tower and be like, can I get a discount? Like, no, the price is the price. <laughs> that ain't happening. What we do is we get an overall idea of the options and we choose like our top one, mm -hmm. two mm -hmm. or three. And then we see if we can afford them all. Mm -hmm. If we can't, then we pick the number one. And if it's a bit of a stretch, but it's like a bucket list, like taking our kids to the top of the Eiffel Tower. Right. For us, that was bucket list. So we spent the money and did it. Mm -hmm. Um one of the things, though, um, I know when we first got to like a country, what um, we did, what I do with the kid is kids. What I do is I look at the top five things to do in that country, mm -hmm. and then we pick like the two things that they really wanted to do, and then we sit down, my wife and I, we'll, we'll talk about okay, are we really gonna be able to do this, or we're not gonna be able to do this? Are we gonna regret not doing yeah, it? Exactly. Like we're here. So that's our thing. We're here. But we can't choose everything, even no. though we're here, you know? So we do we pick and choose. Budget. Yeah, we do pick and choose. We have to say no to some things. But we've really come to be okay with um, leaving some things behind to come mm -hmm. back for. Yeah. 
So right. it's okay. Like, it's okay to not get to do everything we want to do each mm-hmm. time. Like, we can come back and do some of the other things, and that's exciting to be able to have things to look forward to. Mm-hmm. So that's how we afford excursions. It's the same way you save up money to have excursions wherever you're living yeah. now at a home base. Um, yeah, same thing. So, okay, same, so same then this is actually my this is actually um, our friend Marsha back at home. And yes, I miss you a ton. We miss you a lot, a lot, Marcia, a lot. Marcia, that was Marcia. another question. Okay, is it hard to hang out with other families that have bigger budgets than us? <laughs> No. no, we just don't go with them that no. day. Well, no. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, the excursions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's true. Yeah. In general, no. We yeah. just hang out. And if they want to go do something, we're like, yeah, budgetless family. Yeah, that's true. Hashtag so. budgetless family. Like, we can't afford that, but mm-hmm. thanks for the invite. Yeah. We can do this, this, or this um, these days this week. You know and what I mean? sometimes instead of them doing an the excursion, they might just chill out at the house. And they're like, oh, yeah, it is kind of yeah, spendy. I, mean, I don't know. We don't really want to do it. So, I don't know. So, you know, we find different things to cool do. too. But... Then sometimes we splurge. We've been here for four months, and once in a while we let our kids, we'll take our kids to Grand Canyon. You can see our Halloween video um, where we spent the day there. And it's super fun, but it's a little spendy. I mean, I'll give you an idea of little spendy for us, okay? What I'm actually saying, an idea of little spendy for us is, um, what is it? I don't remember. Is it 400 a person? It's 400 for, uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. 400 if you're going to play. Yeah. If you're going to swim and play, it's 400. Kingston is... 300? Yes. 320? Yeah. Something like For that? little children. He's 100 because he's not going to in the water. <laughs> so, <laughs> this is bought. So, that is three about $3 mm-hmm. to just hang out. Um, three fifty maybe. And then 400 is... No. Oh, crud. You, where's your phone? Okay. Makai, yes. I should know. 300 is about 10 bucks. So yes, 300 is 10 bucks. Yes. 400 is more like 15, 15 yeah. to 17. Yeah, close I think to, it 20, might be 17. Close to 20. I think we got it down a little bit though because we bought a 10 punch pass. Yes. You and so it made it more like three something for each person. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, that's not that bad. But, you know, again, it's like everything times four, times six, whatever, exactly. whoever's participating. Yes. Um, does that up and make a difference when you only have so much money? Mm-hmm. So, but we do. Like every once in a while, like, we love movies and we love yeah. going out to eat once in a while. Mm-hmm. So once in a while we splurge. Once in a while, you guys, when even though you're eating delicious Thai food, once in a while your kids really want a pizza or French fries or Mexican food. Yeah. If you find a place that has decent Mexican food and you're out of the country, you you jump on it. You go there once or twice. We did. Okay, so it's not like weekly for us, but once or twice. Mm-hmm. And I think the Mexican place was like we shared, we were. Like, we did, we did. We I think everything. we did it for. I think the most we've spent at restaurants was like twelve hundred, mm-hmm. which mm-hmm. is about thirty. Let me see, two. Yeah. Thirty-eight. Yeah. Thirty-eight. Thirty-eight, probably mm-hmm. thirty-five to forty dollars mm-hmm. for a more Western food yeah. restaurant. So, anyways, that gives you an idea. So, otherwise, we eat out. That was actually. We'll just go there next. Someone asked Cook if we at home eat out or a combo. So, everybody told us, okay, before we, we, throughout Europe, we cooked at home, Mm -hmm. and then once in a while, okay, we might have ate our way through Europe, like via gelato and kebabs. Yeah. (laughs) Especially Eastern Europe. Okay, but, um, yeah, we mainly cook at home, Mm -hmm. and that does save us a lot of money. I would say, it's her, she's going on. Yeah. I would say I'm we were probably on an average in Europe. We probably spent an average of eight hundred on groceries. Mm-hmm. Sometimes a little more, sometimes less, depending on what we were doing. Um, and I mean, somewhat comparable to the states. I think we might, like, especially in Eastern Europe, we were spending much less. Mm-hmm. Like Macedonia, we would have got by with way less. Oh, so, heck yeah! We probably would have spent maybe five hundred for the whole month yeah. in Albania. Seriously. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, but we didn't stay there that long because we had to get to Greece. So anyways, in Thailand, everyone told me you absolutely cannot cook at home. It is way more expensive. You just have to eat the dollar street food. That's it. Okay. So we didn't have a, um, kitchen, kitchen the first month. And I added up, like we were, our poor kids, like we were like, 
No, one dish, and it needs to be like 30 to 50 baht, which is like, it's 31 baht to a dollar. Mm -hmm. So, a dollar to two dollars, but okay, times six, times three times a day, plus That's probably a few fruit shakes, plus water, like, I you added can't drink it, the water out of yeah. It. So I added it up, and I was like, "Holy cow! We are spending more on food than we spent for sure in Eastern Europe." I'm like this is crazy. So we got to Chiang Mai, and uh, we live out of the city, and so mm -hmm. we can't just go difficult. get food every day. Yeah. yeah, we do have a cheap place up the street that we can get street food or home cooked like Thai food, um, and we usually do that on Fridays, and we spend. I mean, much. he upped it when his mom or whoever started working there, but I think it's still like no more than like 10 bucks. No, yeah. 400 we paid a few yeah, times, but we were yeah, feeding yeah, the missionaries, yeah, four missionaries. Yeah, yeah. So that doesn't really count. So yeah. we usually, for our family, we can eat there between like, well, he's charging us 150 for a while. Mm -hmm. yeah, that was <laughs> like five to eight dollars. We're feeding our whole family. Yeah. Um, but we would do that like once a week. And so then we cook it at home. Um, I'll do a whole other video on that because that's a lot, of, a lot of mom's question. Mm. It's how do you feed your family stuff that they'll eat. So we'll do a video on that to come in future months. But I would say once we got it down here, where to go shopping. Mm -hmm. And then I started paying a little bit more to have it delivered because I was spending, and maybe it's not a little bit more because I was spending no, money no. and time. To go get the grab. To take the taxi take the, there and yeah, back. Yeah. And the, and it was a minimum of five each way for the taxi mm -hmm. for yeah. where I was to go, needing to go. Um, when I can get a ride or when I go with someone or happen to be in town and go to the local market for veggies and fruits, mm -hmm. it's insane. Like, yeah. it's like five U.S. cents for three huge bunches of cilantro and like, just anyway, it's like pennies, you know? And then maybe Market's like... good deal. We got a bag of bell peppers. I'm not kidding. Like, I don't even know how many pounds of bell peppers that was. It was we were cutting them up, peppers. eating them like chips and with everything. And because we got four bell peppers for like $6 one night at the grocery store because I really wanted it for something we were making. That was bananas. And then I went to the local market and got that gigantic bag Bang. for 100 baht, which is like three something. Yeah, so it was huge. crazy. Like, seriously. No, seriously, we ate that for like weeks. Um... So, anyways, there's ways to find, to cut things down. We we knew we were going to be here for three to four months, so we bought in bulk. We found, like, mm -hmm. their kind of Costco knockoff. Yeah. And so we got tons of rice and oats and just, like, cooking supplies, which is going to be kind of hard for me to leave, like, all behind and have to, like, figure that out in the next place. But yeah, that's going to be we something. can't take that all with us. So, anyways. um, So, yeah, we do mostly eating at home, a little eating out. So, combo, combo. Kind of, but yeah, not but an equal not, combo. Yeah. So yeah. It's not an equal combo. What is yeah. a combo? It's like it's like eighty five percent eating at home, right? Fifteen eating mm -hmm. out, maybe yeah. or something. Sounds like about that. right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, another question was doctors, ER visits, dentists. So <laughs> what do we do? Well, I do have the military insurance. But we haven't used that as of yet. We canceled the dental portion though, because yeah. we were paying for that. But yeah. the, the medical we do have. Yeah, we still have the medical. But yeah, we've never we used haven't it. used it. You know, um, there's a way to call uh, that number wherever country you're in, and find out what medical uh, assistance is uh, used and needed. But we've been lucky and, and blessed because the few incidents that the kids had. It was basically uh, either covered or it was basically at a, a low cost. That we well, places where healthcare is amazing. Mm -hmm, and you mm -hmm. see how crazy it is in the States and yeah. these other countries. So we took Kingston to the doctor in, in Wales, Wales and we paid 15 euros. Yeah, we yeah. took... Um, and you like anti antibiotics or something with that yeah. too. I took Mackay to the ER in England and it was free. Slam his finger to the door now. Yeah. <laughs> we took Taven... In Montenegro, when she cut her leg, and yeah. that was going to be really expensive. They yeah, were trying right. to charge an arm and a leg. Seriously. And it was like a little sketchy. Like yeah. the other places were super cool, like yeah. just cool, like totally fine. But that place made me nervous. And well, it was like they wanted to give her stitches, but it was like no, but they were scary. Like and, it, and the place stitches. looked kind of scary. Yeah. I don't know. It yeah. was it was sorry, Ma uh, sorry Montenegro, but yeah. we love you. Um, right yeah. Yeah. So. We didn't end up getting it taken care of there, but we did find a nurse in Albania that checked it. And actually, he just like we were at a hotel and we were using their pools. Mm -hmm, like we just paid mm -hmm. like a small fee for their day pass and right, used the pool right. one day. 
Um, it was this is where kindness hot. is everywhere. But anyways, and so we were just chatting and stuff, and then he told me that he was also a nurse, and I was like, oh, will you look at her leg? And he because her she leg. wanted to go in the pool. Yeah, so and was. I was like, we're not letting her go in the pool. And he's like, no, 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 she can't go in the pool. It's starting to get infected. Mm-hmm. So he's like, you stay here. I want me to go buy what she needs, and you can just pay me. And I was yep. like, yes. And so he, came he back went, and I think I paid medicine. him like 10 bucks or something, yeah. and he got well, that was awesome. bandages and medicine and antibiotics mm-hmm. and everything. It was amazing. And so that's, you know, that worked out there. Um, we knew we were leaving Monte Dago. We didn't just not take care of her. We ran yes. around back and forth between three different places yeah. all it was, night. It was, it was a like late six night. hours. It was, it was crazy. Yeah. Yeah. And it just didn't feel right. It was kind of a run around. One mm-hmm. place cleaned it out, and I... One they place, cleaned it out. They place, nearly cleaned out her insides too. Yeah, one place cleaned it out for her, and it was traumatic. So yeah. we she didn't want to have her do anything else, and we knew we were leaving the next day. So we were just like, "Yeah, we're done." She was scrubbing like she was scrubbing oh, stop, a car stop, wash. Stop! 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 Oh, sorry. okay. Anyways, <laughs> so the dentist, um, we finally had dental cleanings <laughs> recently. Here, actually, a couple of weeks ago or so. Mm-hmm. Here in Thailand, and the cleaning, they didn't do x-rays or anything. It was just no. a cleaning. Um, the cleaning for all six of us came to 180 US, I believe. Mm-hmm. It actually got them down to 150. But apparently, you're not really supposed to do that. Yeah. Anyways. It's Thailand, <laughs> right? Hangle everything. Okay, so it's like 175 to, one, to 180 for six people. Um, Kingston was a little bit less yeah. than ours were. But it's ours were almost 30 a person, basically. Um, so that's how we take care of that stuff. We just go. And a lot of people I know that they, when they know that they go back once a year to the U.S. for whatever reason, they wait and just do it all when they get there. Mm -hmm. So that's another option. Um, medical care is great in a lot of countries. Like, just do Mm -hmm. your research and figure it out. I mean, if it's an emergency, it's an emergency. You're going to go, you're going regardless. Yeah. But otherwise, like, you can really, I mean, a lot of places... People actually plan vacations to like medical tourism to mm-hmm. come and get med- mm-hmm. medical things done because it's so much cheaper. Yeah, than we did wait until we were in Thailand to do the teeth because we knew it was going to yeah, be Yeah, we knew that it was good out of pocket here. Mm-hmm. Huh. Do you ever feel taken advantage of as a tourist? So like more like money wise. <laughs> there are times. When where... you need a little... Oh, no. Okay, sorry. No, there are times that we, when, you know, the prices... There's local price and foreigner price. Yes. And some places are really clear about it. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? And it's like double, triple, quadruple. Yeah. And so, you know, it's like, it's kind of a bummer. But then when, when you're somewhere where, you know, they're making as much money in a year as you do in a month, then yeah. it's like, heck yeah. Seriously. Let them in free. Yes. Like, <laughs> they shouldn't pay anything. Like, that's cool. So, uh, you know, it doesn't usually bother us. Like, sometimes mm-hmm. it's a little insane, but... It is what it is, and you just choose if you want to go or not. Right. The biggest, biggest way that they take advantage of you in every country I can think of. The taxis. <laughs> taxis. Yep. The taxis. The taxis, yes. man. Oh. Yeah, the taxis. So if, you, if they have Uber or if they have Grab, right. if they have an app that's going to, like, tell you the price, just do that. Mm-hmm. Yes. Some places you'll start to get a vibe and you'll know, or you read online and you do your research. Bangkok. You insist meter. they use a meter. 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 Legally, they have to, but in Chiang Mai, they've all gathered together and they said, We don't care. Like, it, none of us give in and they won't have a choice. So, what they, was it? they try to say that grab was illegal. They told here and in Chiang Mai. <laughs> so, it's not. And they told us it was because they were trying to get us to pay a certain price. Mm-hmm. And, like, we know. So, like, We'll also, we'll look up on the Grab app or Uber for you guys. Um, mm-hmm. We'll look up on the app and we'll see what the price is. And then we'll go haggle and try to get a ride from someone right, in person. Right. And we'll like pre-set mm-hmm. the price before so we, we get in. So we have an idea before we just jump in blind. Because they, they will refuse to use a meter here. Um, it's a taxi mafia. <laughs> so <laughs> that's the biggest way. Um, I've also been surprised because it's supposed to be like bartering is supposed to be so huge here. And mm-hmm. we do yeah. it a lot, but yeah. like a lot of the times they're just like, no. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're just stuck And you're like, on dang, it. all right. Yeah. Like, you got <coughs> cash cannot, like I that. Cannot. You don't need to make money. <laughs> That's, what they say. That's cool. So, um, yeah, sometimes we do feel taken advantage of, but usually with a little like research beforehand and going mm-hmm. in prep, we just laugh. <laughs> like, they give us the crazy prices for stuff and we just crack up laughing. And like, we'll be like, Sometimes I feel bad. Like, we'll be like, we're not tourists. We live here, right, you know? Right, and they're like, right. okay, never mind. And then they'll either chat with us or they'll laugh and say goodbye or they'll give us a better price. 
Oh, sometimes I feel kind of bad when we go places as tourists mm-hmm. because we're not like typical tourists that are going to buy a bunch mm-hmm. of souvenirs. Right. And it's like kind of sucks because you want to support the local economy. Right. It's like I've gone, mm-hmm. you know, shopping a little bit here and like got some new thing because well, it's so sick of wearing too. my clothes and they're, you know, fairly cheap here. <clears throat> um, you don't want a uniform anymore? No, we left that in Vienna. <laughs> so... You know, you do want to do a little local shopping if there's something you need. But as a full-time traveler, like, you only have so much weight in your bag. And if mm-hmm. you are not prepared to get rid of some stuff and you don't yeah. really need it, then you just aren't going to shop. So sometimes I feel a little bit bad. Because, like, we walk in and we're like, no, we're just looking and we just want to chat. And sorry, like, mm-hmm. we're not actually going to spend hey, some money. I'm okay to window shop. <laughs> yeah, so. I know. But sometimes I'm like, uh, I wish I could buy something just to support you. But I just... <laughs> So basically someone's asking... Did, do you do you or did you have okay we have this much money we're gonna right. make it last this long and then and we have this to go. come back home no, no. no. <laughs> that we, wasn't our game plan we we knew that we could we knew we knew our awesome budgeting skills which in this to really we're I'm, you guys literally I can't impress upon you enough if we can do this anyone can do this mm. we are horrible budgeters. I am stubborn. I do a lot of research. I'm not afraid to ask for a discount. I've gotten so much more assertive since we've been traveling. Um, I find a way because where there's a will, there's a way. And I mm-hmm. and I don't want to go home. I want to see more places. I want to do more things. And so I'm asking. I'm trying. I'm researching. I'm seeing what coupons I can find. I'm seeing what deals I can find. I'm looking on sites, local sites with nomads and seeing what deals they found and how they've done it. I'm networking. Like I'm asking people what they know, who they know, you know. So, where there's a will, there's a way. Um, and that's the thing, too, you have to realize. If somebody did it before you, then you can do it as well. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like she said, she went on the sites of it. Well, you did this. How did you do it? I mean, it might not work for you, but you can take a little bit from different people here and there and then just put it, it together, together and kind man. of, you know, make it your own thing. Make there it is. Real. There's an answer for everyone out there. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, we didn't have an endpoint except for that we wanted to make sure that that chunk of money lasted one year. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then we would figure it out is kind of what we were saying. Yeah. And so our figuring it out so far is you working. Yes. Teaching um, English online. And we feel like we're going to need to do a little more than that. And so I'm working on some things. But in the meantime, we just keep hustling and just like researching and finding the best deals we can. And another thing we've done to save money, though, is we've only taken, we've done 20 countries. We've Mm -hmm. only taken four flights. Yes. (laughs) And one we didn't need to. So three flights, technically. We could have taken a bus to Phuket from Bangkok. We took a flight because it was super cheap. Mm -hmm. So... Yeah. That was a cool flight. Though. That's how most people <laughs> blow a ton of money is on big flights. airline tickets. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. Especially when you have multiple people, six, four yeah. people, six people, mm-hmm. you know, whatever. So that's another thing. Look at, can, that's why we chose Europe or we were looking at, you know, we wanted to get to a continent mm-hmm. where we could travel to multiple countries without having to take a big flight. Yeah. You can exactly. take trains and there are discounts if you're in Europe. It looks spendy, but research, there's you, there's family passes you can purchase, yes. and it makes the train tickets way less. Um, the buses, don't think you're stuck having to take a train. Like, the buses are cheaper, and they're actually really nice. Yes. Yeah. Here and in, they're the preferred method of transportation here in Thailand, actually. The locals actually. go with the buses, yep. too. And so. you can get a bus with um, a little TV, a massager in your chair, um, the meals. It kick it back. A meal. Yeah. AC. Mm-hmm. A water bottle. A blanket and pillow. Video, like, like a seriously, TV that like channel. So and and the, and those ones are like seventeen to twenty five dollars mm-hmm. a person. So yeah. So it's not bad at all. So there are definitely options you can do, and you you don't. We bought a car. Like we weren't planning on that. No. So you know that was like. 3,000 U.S., I think, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and we drove that 18,000 plus miles, you know, through 15, six, no, Seven. 18 countries. Yeah, until I broke it. <laughs> no, 17 countries. We didn't drive in Spain. Yeah, 17 that's true. countries. That's true. So um, there are definitely different things you can do to get around. You don't have to just take expensive flights. So mm-hmm. I just wanted to throw that in there. Um, okay, so then this was the last question. <laughs> says... Do you have plans to come home and how will you transition back 
And and as far as are we gonna be homeowners again? <laughs> I don't even know which question I want to tell go first. Uh, are we are we plan on going back home? Well, as I told her, as I told a lot of people, we're gonna ride this mug till the wheel fall off. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So basically with that being said, don't have no uh end in sight as far as Sorry um, guys at home. Yeah. I mean, we might come back to a We definitely want to go back visit. and visit, for yeah, sure. Of course. And but that's again that's a big expensive flight. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So that might take us a little time and just finding the right waiting until we can find mm-hmm. the right deal. Like there will be and a great then, sell at some point. And then not only that, with me being retired military, I do have the ability to use a air mobility command, which is basically like a standby. But it's really yeah, hard, and especially yeah. for six people. So we haven't seriously, done it yet. Seriously. So that hopefully that will work out yeah. for us at some point Say and save us a flight. But um, it's not an easy fix. So we do have plans to go home and visit. And um, we don't have plans. We've heard, as far as how will you transition back, we've heard it's really hard, actually. Yeah. Um, and that also goes back to the sacrifices. One of the sacrifices that we have made at this point, because, I mean... Abundant thinking, right? We're going to be like making some bank soon, you guys. There like you go. We're going to have way more money flowing in. My hands are exactly, open now. Exactly, exactly. Um, but as of now, we've probably sacrificed our, like, it even being an option for us to go back. <laughs> no, honestly, like, I don't think we can afford to go back to the States no. <laughs> in nope. most places. I looked in our little hometown in eastern Washington, and we couldn't even afford an Airbnb there. Mm-hmm. Like, it was crazy high, which I don't understand. Um, so, <laughs> so we're not we're not saying we never will live in the States again. Mm-hmm. We're saying we don't have plans to. Um, we're completely open. We travel by faith. Yeah. And that's how we're on this journey in the first place. We believe in God, a higher power, whatever you want to call it. It's God. He's God to us, our Father. Um and if we get inspiration and feel that that's what he wants us to do, then we know he'll provide a way and we'll do it. So mm-hmm. we're, we're open to whatever, but we don't have any personal plans to go back and to try that transition. You can look no. at reverse culture shock, though. It's really hard for people, especially when it's been like years. Um, so with that said, do we ever want to be home, homeowners again anywhere? Like we've never even actually talked about this. I have some no. thoughts. I'm curious. Only thing that we did talk about was I remember we said that get an RV <laughs> and drive around and go from place to place, you know what I mean? So yeah, why not? I want to see every case, state. That, I want to do that in Australia too, though. That's being a homeowner, you know, owning yeah, an RV, you know what I true. mean? So. Um, I'm not opposed. Like, okay, in my ideal, ideal, ideal world, we have... We check this out. We, ha- I'm hearing yeah, this, so. we totally have more money coming in, enough that we can fly home whenever we want. And we have a small house, like something simple, and we can either rent it out on Airbnb or not, if we can afford not to, and just have some of like our favorite things, my favorite things, because I love, I do love some things. Like I have some things, I kept decoration items and different things that make me happy to have them around. So I would love to like set up my little home and have some of the stuff I love and then like leave it for nine months a year. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, still, like, travel all the time. So is that going to be in the Scottish Islands? <laughs> oh, I hope, yeah. I was like, No, but then we got to see family, though, so... I don't know, but, yeah, I mean, yeah, let's have a little house there and a little house in the States. Mm. <laughs> okay, so... <laughs> we're open to anything. Possibilities are endless. Like, we don't want to limit ourselves, so who knows? As of now, our plan is to keep just trying to find the best deals we can and see as many places as we can, meet as many people as we can. And just to uh, raise our children the right way and, you know, to see what's best for them, best for us, and what our higher power has in plan, has in in store for us. Yes. So. So, that was all the questions. I really hope that this was thorough enough that you at least can find... Well, at least have satisfaction and like, okay, that makes sense. That's how they're doing it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And we're I not hope, rich Americans. No, we're not. We're really not rich Americans. <laughs> and I hope that even if you don't have a pension or whatever, like if you have a bachelor's degree, you can work for a VIP kid. You can teach, you know, and we gave you some other options. And just to let you know, like we hope we gave you some enough hope 
that you're that if you really want it that you're willing to go to Google and search for how people make money online you know you're willing to think outside the box so that's really what it takes is the mind shift to look at things differently yeah. because nothing nothing changed drastically like you were you you were making more money mm -hmm. and working a lot more hours and were really unhappy but we were still living paycheck to paycheck yeah like you started making a little bit more money and we bumped up our spending yeah. and our yeah. you know our quality that's, of that's life. the normal uh, american way yeah so now we're living on like yeah. Half. Exactly. Exactly. But if you are really considering uh, checking out VIP, uh, kids, just make the sure you uh, link us below and, you know, give you the reference His referral code. code. Yeah. So, yeah, we make sure that happened for you. That would help us out and it would help you out. Cause mm -hmm. it's, and it's a fun job. He loves win -win. it. Win-win. Win-win. Yeah. So, that's our takeaway. We hope that this is super helpful and it really answers all the questions. If it doesn't somehow, leave them below and we will answer them right away. Just give us some more. Yeah, we'll totally answer it. If it's budget related, um, anything to follow up with this or something that we missed, please leave it in the comments. I will answer it within 24 hours. And um, if it's not budget related, please leave your questions and we will address those in um, our future videos mm -hmm. of the month. And then also let us know what uh, type of videos you like to see for the next month as far as uh, in-depth yeah. and uh, thorough information. Yeah. What do you want us to talk way too mm -hmm. much about? Um, and I will say I don't have this shared anywhere, but I did set up. It's called a PayPal pool, and the link is down at the very bottom. Like, I hit it, you guys. I really wasn't trying to solicit. But I am spending, I mean... Probably nine hours on editing videos that would take me two if I had the proper equipment mm -hmm. and software. Like, I'm running really slow. Mm -hmm. So that money, anything that gets donated to that will only only be used um, to upgrade, get us hopefully a camera at some point, and first and foremost to buy Final Cut Pro for editing and to buy a laptop that works faster Skinny than one yeah, that's from so 2012 and doesn't weigh six pounds. <laughs> yeah. So we would, we are, we're, I'm just putting it out there. We don't expect anything, mm -hmm. um, but we would love to keep growing this channel. We would love to keep creating content. I would love to be more current with my content, mm -hmm. but I just can't go any faster. Anyways, if you can't and don't want to do that, that is awesome too, but we would super love it if you would share this video. Mm -hmm. If you would um, check us out on Instagram and follow us there and go ahead and subscribe and hit the, which direction is it? That way? I think it's that way. <laughs> Anyways, subscribe and hit the notification bell. That would really help us out too. Um, your watch time makes a huge difference. But most of all, we really want to hear from you in the comments. We'd love to hear from you. We want to know who's watching. We want to talk with you. And we want to make sure that we're producing some content in between all our travels that will actually be helpful to you. So. Thanks for watching. We hope Thank this helps. You. We love you guys love you so all. much. All right. All right. Lost Reboot. Happy oh, travels. That's the wrong one.